today we're going to talk about Princess Vera Chantess, her shoulder, chest, neck, back rig. I've been on a tear recently going through various girls and fixing up their chest rig to deal with a couple of, uh, what would you call it, hard poses. And uh, so I've kind of settled upon this rig, uh, which we see right here in this main 3D viewport. So we're going to talk about the bones there at a really high level real quick. And then we'll talk about um, some of them in a bit more detail. <coughs> At a high level, we have a scapula, which kind of controls the main parts of the shoulder. And then we have um, these bones up here in the top part of the shoulder that follow the upper arm. So let's take this arm and move it up. Uh, so as you can see, those gray bones in her shoulder are rotating up. As those gray bones rotate up, these two bones here, which are the uh, pectoral on the inside and pectoral on the outside, also move up. And so let's uh, move this up and look at that. So if you watch those pectoral muscles, you see them rotating up to keep pointing towards the kind of front side of her shoulder. Let's call this area the front side of her shoulder because as her arm is up, that would be towards the front, right? And um, then there's a orange bone here that is a child of the pectoral and it stretches to a bone down here. So kind of watch that. So it's a stretchy bone, but it, um, it has some complexities about it, which we'll talk about in a second. Then uh, if you look carefully, you'll see there's a bone going from the outside of her breast pointing back to the top of the latimus, and let's look at that again. So uh, you can see what it's doing, it's pointing to the top of the lat latimus, so as the latimus uh, does its thing, then the back side of the breast follows, uh, following all the way up towards the front side of the breast. Uh, then the uh, last thing probably to note is that this little orange circle, or yellow circle here at the base of this orange bone, this is a child of the orange bone, and this is the parent of her entire breast rig. So if you pretend like the entire breast rig is just one bone, uh, then you can see that it like moves and it scales a little bit with the uh, stretchiness of this uh, stretch to constrained bone right here. So that is the front side. The back side is, uh, as hinted a little earlier, there's a latimus here. So as her arm moves up, that is stretching to this little gray bone here, uh, which is also in her shoulder. And so it, you know, that bone points back a little bit, and then as her shoulder you know, rotates up, it kind of goes down and around and then back up over here. So that gets the latimus going where it needs to go. And then as her shoulder rotates, if I was to take the whole shoulder here and rotate it, then you can see the scapula, which is this kind of uh, question mark shape thing right here. Uh, that thing also moves along with the uh, rest of the shoulder. and so. That makes up all the major bones that um, make this shoulder rig work. And so if you are trying to set up your own shoulder rig, that's how you would start. Um, a little bit of detail here. This pectoral, uh, there's two different bones into her shoulder, one where the outside of the pectoral points and one where the inside of the pectoral points. And so these are also stretch to constraints that achieve that. And let's take a look at the pectoral internal, right? So it's a, it does a stretch to, but at only 0.7 strength, whereas on the outside of the pec, it also does a stretch to, but it does it with a one strength. And so the idea there is as her shoulder pulls forward, then the pectoral kind of, um, it will, how would you say, curl around. Um, and so let's actually grab the shoulder, bring it forward, and then look at that. So as we pull it forward, now the pectoral curls around to the front. And then if I rotate it back, way back, then you can see the pectoral is curling around to the back. And so this way, uh, you know, it curls around her rib cage as it goes back, and it just kind of curls around nothing. It just gets pulled forward by, um, you know, by the fact that the muscle's engaging when it comes forward. And so this gives you kind of a really nice deform in the whole range of motion in this area of the um, chest then this stretchy bendy or stretchy bone not bendy bone this stretchy bone here uh, gives all the deform to that area plus uh, because the breast is a child of it causes the breast to move to places where it needs to uh, go move and stretch i should say because it's a child of a stretchy bone therefore it gets some of that volume variation now why the bone moves when it's a stretchy bone is just because the stretch two constraint only has a uh, 0.5 and it's the child of this mobile bone here so if i rotate the clavicle you see that the orange stretchy bone here will like it does change its size and change its volume, but it also moves because that the stretch two constraint is only partial. Um, the making the stretch two constraint partial only 0.5 means the bone moves quite a lot, but it also means it rotates out more than I want it to. So I've also added a bit of extra damped track to keep it tracked to that location, whereas it also can move. And so. <clears throat> Those two constraints work together to give this sort of, uh, you know, a more subtle uh, movement and stretchiness and everything that, that we need to uh, make the breast look nice. And so you, if you kind of look here, you can sort of see that, that volume variation happening there. You can see the movement happening there. Uh, and then you can, uh, well, I guess that's it, the variation in the movement, which is important. Uh, then the final bit, I guess, let's look again at the uh, scapula, right? So the scapula more or less 
uh, this bone here is what's responsible for moving it around, and then this bone here does a little bit of a stretch to, or excuse me, a damped track to a, a bone that never moves down here. So uh, what ends up happening is it always ends up going back to that, uh, pointing back down to here, which I don't think, um, I, which is definitely not how the scapula actually works. This is not anatomically correct, but what is, is anatomically correct uh, is a bit beyond my current modeling and reading skills. What I really should do is create a little scapula-shaped geometry here and then have it just move along with the, scap, uh, with the clavicle and then have the skin maybe shrink wrap to that thing. But uh, since we can't do that, we have to kind of uh, suffer with a little bit of anatomical incorrectness. So this bone kind of moves and rotates along with the scapula using these uh, copy location and copy rotation constraints. And then it does a stretch to you down here to a bone that never moves. Or excuse me, not stretch to a damp track to a bone that never moves. And so then um, it ends up looking reasonably okay. It's definitely not correct. And if you know your backs and you start watching it, you'll know it doesn't look right. But um, it doesn't look awful, which is kind of what we're looking, you know, kind of what we're looking for with a 3D model. Uh, so that is the overview of this whole rig. Um, I guess I should talk a little bit about the um, other bones and things nearby. So I do have uh, underneath her breasts, I have these uh, bones at the top of her ribs. And this way, if the breast moves down, the ribs don't move down. So you end up with some creasing underneath the breast, which you can't see because of the bra. But uh, you could see if the bra wasn't there. Uh, then we also have some other um, rib bones here. These are for keeping uh, the weight of these ribs so that they don't move when the back moves. Uh, this is part of the trick that I have to play because I don't do weight painting on my armature. I just do automatic weights and in order to do automatic weights and only automatic weights, you sometimes have to put bones in places to you know, differentiate between um, where bones are in real life and then soft tissue. So for example, like these down here in her abdomen are soft tissue, they're stretchy, they move around. Uh, these bones are just children of the spine. They don't do anything special. They just kind of hang out there and capture weight so that when her entire upper body moves, then the um, mesh also moves along with it. So that's the idea there. The one thing that you're not seeing here, and I suppose I should just bring it up to, to uh, be able to see it, is the um, trapezius. So this is covered and doesn't change at all from the neck rig. So I already have a neck rig tutorial, but it's just, this is part of the uh, shoulder. It has, you know, there is a stretchy bone that starts here at the base of the neck and goes out to the back side of the shoulder. And that way, when her uh, shoulder moves, then the back side kind of deforms correctly. Uh, that is, like I say, already been covered elsewhere and isn't that special um, in this case. So go watch all tutorials because there is knowledge there. I think that's about all to say on this uh, setup. There are obviously a few more bones in there. Like I didn't talk really about how the breast works at all. Uh, maybe I'll talk about that later, but as you can see, it's not just a simple bone. There is some complexity there for allowing for gravity and um, for changing its size and shape, etc. There's also some other bones uh, here that um, as her breasts move, or as this bone is moved like inwards, we don't want it to go back into her chest. That bone prevents that there. And there are, um, I guess, uh, actually I think I really have talked about almost all the bones. There's also a sternum here, which uh, is kind of down the middle and keeps the weight from, uh, you know, the breasts when they're moving quite a distance, it keeps them from pulling the uh, chest bone in the middle there out. So uh, yeah, there we go. That's, that's the whole setup. I'll make another video separately where I go into individual bits so that we can uh, see how the magic is working, probably starting with the pecs and the breasts and then uh, talking about the other parts later. Thanks for watching this quick overview and uh, enjoy.